Hey, Freedom. It's so good to be with you today. I really miss you guys. I can't wait for us to get back together. We're going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. And I look around at all these empty seats, and I just I miss all of you. <laughs> I really do. I miss all of you. So today what I want to do is I just want to flood your soul with the Word of God. All right? I just want to dump a bunch of scripture on you, let it build your faith. I can try to encourage you, and you may come away uplifted, but if we allow the Word of God and His voice to encourage us, we're going to come away empowered, and that's what we want. And I know right now you're getting bombarded with the news media, you're getting bombarded with social media, you're hearing all these negative things, uh, the coronavirus, how it's out of control, and it may be months before we get out of this, and in the economy, how bad it is, and it's going to take a long time to recover. But my Bible says that the just shall live by faith. We don't live by sight. All right? So what we need right now is radical faith. And that's what I want to talk about is the faithfulness of God. And you might be saying, well, Joe, why do you talk about faith all the time? Every time we get together, you're talking about faith. Well, I'm glad you asked. I want to show you. Romans chapter 1 and verse 16, and we'll read verse 17, says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God for salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power, it's the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, that's the key, believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. And then verse 17 says, for in it, for in what? For in the gospel, the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith. As it is written, the just shall live by faith. So the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, from believing to believing. This Christian life is all about believing, and we know this, but I want to go a little bit deeper. Hebrews 11.1 1 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. The, the New Living makes it a little more clear. It says faith is the confidence that what we hope for will actually happen. So faith gives us confidence. It is the confidence. It gives us assurance about things we cannot see. My faith in God gives me confidence in God. My faith gives me an assurance that what I'm believing for is actually going to happen in my life. That's why we need to have faith. The just, just shall, shall live by faith. So why is this so important? Now we move down to verse 6. It says, <clears throat> But without faith, it is impossible to please Him. Without faith in our lives, it's impossible to please God. So you and I have to have faith. That's why we talk about it all the time. Because we cannot please God apart from faith. So how many of you want to please God? We all do, don't we? Without faith, without believing, you and I cannot please God. So I want you to say this with me. Say, it's all about believing. It's all about believing. So how are we going to make it through this difficult time of uncertainty? We see chaos all around us. How are we going to survive this, come out stronger on the other side? Because I believe that's what's going to happen. What's going to carry us through this is our faith in God. It's our believing in God's faithfulness that is going to be an anchor for our soul. So when the storms of life, they they begin to toss you to and fro, it may disrupt you, but it won't dislocate you. You're staying right there, right there in place. So what I want to do today is, like I said, I want to load you up with scripture. I want to load you up with all kinds of ammo that you can, so that you can fight the enemy. And I want to use our time together to build your faith. You don't serve a God who's playing catch-up. You don't serve a God who's wondering what's going to happen next. He's not reacting to what the devil is doing. This virus didn't take him by surprise. He's not pacing the floor of heaven, wondering how he's going to bless you financially, wondering how he's going to get his blessings to you. None of it is a surprise to him. He's not intimidated by a virus. He's not running scared of the economy. So you and I shouldn't be either. So I want to show you something. 1 John chapter 4 and verse 17. God is faithful. Amen? 1 John 4, 17 says, "'Love has been perfected among us in this, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment.'" Because as he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so are we in this world. So I want to ask you today, is Jesus panicking? Is he freaking out? Is he scared of a virus? Is he the least little bit worried? No, of course not. So that means that you and I shouldn't be either. Because as he is, so are we in this world. And I love this because John makes it clear. He says, in this world. That means right now. Because too many Christians have this, this mentality of off, putting it off in the by and by. When we get to heaven, when we all get to heaven, you know the song, and what a day of rejoicing that will be. But they put all the blessings off of getting to heaven, but we're going to live a miserable life. But that's not what John says. Right here he says, as he is, so are we in this world. So how is Jesus right now? He is seated at the right hand of the Father, right? He's living from victory. He already obtained the victory. So you and I now maintain it. 
Ephesians 2 says you and I are seated in heavenly places in Christ. So as he is, so are we in this world. Is he sick? Is he broke? Is he upset? Is he freaking out? Is he walking around worried? Absolutely not. So as he is, so are we in this world. That right there ought to build your faith. Somebody say amen. And I believe right now a lot of Christians are suffering things. They're suffering right now they're, because they don't understand what Jesus already bought them on the cross, the price that he paid. Hosea 4, 6 says, My people perish for lack of knowledge. And because we're not taught right, because we don't understand, and I'm not putting you down, I'm just saying, many times we don't get into the Word of God. You may be suffering for something that you don't understand, for lack of knowledge, for lack of understanding. Many in the church are suffering right now simply because they don't know. So my job as your pastor is to edify you, to build you up, to let you know what all God has given us, to let you know what the finished works of Jesus are, to show you what the Word of God says, who He is, who you are, and what He's given you. And then your job, you have one job to do. Did you know that? Your job is to simply believe what the Word of God says. That's it. Once you believe that, you believe right, you'll act right. You believe right, it changes your entire life. Amen? Your job is to simply believe. So what I want to do today is I want to use our time together as I'm just talking to you, and maybe I'll get into a little bit of preaching later. But I want to talk about the faithfulness of God. I'm going to do a little bit of teaching, and then maybe we'll, we'll end on a wheelie and, and have a good, good time, all right? <clears throat> Your faith in God is what's going to carry you through this storm. Your faith in God is what is going to carry you through this turbulent time. So here we go. What does faithful mean? We talk about the faithfulness of God. The word faithful, it means loyal. It means constant. It means steadfast. This means that your God is constant. It means that he's unmovable, that he is steadfast. You can always count on him. You can count on him because he will never leave you nor forsake you. He's a constant help in the time of trouble. So I want you to say this with me. Say, he's faithful. Come on, say it again. Say, he's faithful. So let's look at how big his faithfulness is. Psalm 36, verse 5. Turn over to Psalms. Psalm 35, remember they're not chapters, they're actually divisions. So the 35th division of Psalms, Psalm 35, or I'm sorry, it's 36 verse 5. <clears throat> it says, your mercy, O Lord, is in the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches the clouds. Your faithfulness, his faithfulness reaches the clouds. So I want you to think about that. From the earth to the clouds, that's how big his faithfulness is. It's encompassing, it's wrapped all around you. You cannot escape it. That's how big his faithfulness is. You're surrounded by God's faithfulness. So now let's go deeper. Second, Corinth, or Second Thessalonians chapter 3. Second Thessalonians 3 and verse 3. But the Lord is faithful. Right out of the gate, he says, The Lord is faithful, who shall establish you and guard you from evil. You have to get this in your heart. My God is faithful. I want you to say that out loud. Say it. Say, my God is faithful. The reason I want you to do this is you begin to confess the word of God. My God is faithful. Your heart needs to hear your mouth speak it. I want to say that again. Your heart needs to hear your mouth speak it. Because it may start out, you're just speaking things. You're just speaking the word of God. But eventually that, will take, that word will take root in your heart. And now you're speaking from a belief system. And now here comes power and the authority of the word of God backing it up. So now I'm speaking from my heart. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So say it again. Say, my God is faithful. Amen. <clears throat> Maybe you had a, a spouse walk out of your life or... You had a father leave you or abandon you. You've had friends that let you down. But your God is faithful. You have to know this. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will never abandon you. He won't wander off. He's a friend that sticks closer than a brother. When you cannot count on the news media, when you can't count on the government, you can't count on people around you, your God is faithful. He doesn't answer to a board. He's not running for office. He doesn't need man's approval. Your God is faithful. He's faithful in the good times. He's faithful in the bad times. Amen? He's faithful when you're doing good. He's faithful when you mess up. Allow me to prove it to you because a lot of people think, yeah, whenever I'm good and I'm coming to church and I'm reading my Bible like I'm supposed to and I'm praying and I'm, I'm abstaining from sin, I'm not doing anything I'm not supposed to, then I can understand when God's good to me. But I want to show you that his faithfulness never stops. Turn over to 2 Timothy chapter 2. In verse 13, 2 Timothy 2, 13. I'm going a little quick today, but that's all right. You can go back and watch the video again get these verses. It says, if we are faithless, he remains faithful. He cannot deny himself. If we are faithless, he remains faithful. He is faithful. Your mistakes cannot change who God is. 
Your sin does not change his faithfulness. Your lack of faith doesn't stop the faithfulness of God. Yeah, but Joe, I'm trying to get my family saved and they're not trying to hear it. I try to share the word of God and they just, they shut me off. I'm believing for the impossible in my life, but I can't find anyone to come into agreement with me. Well, I'm about to run all your excuses out of of the room today because you don't need anybody to come into agreement with you to change God's faithfulness. In fact, a hundred people could rise up against you, come in agreement against you, and it wouldn't change God's faithfulness, all right? It doesn't matter. Romans chapter three and verse three. Turn over there real quick. Romans chapter three and verse three. As soon as I find it, I'll get, (laughs) there it is. For what if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? You got to get this. What if some did not believe? Will their unbelief make the faithfulness of God without effect? And then verse 4 says, the first two words, certainly not. Certainly not. The faithfulness of God is not based upon anybody believing. Anybody around you believing. Anyone believing with you. It's not based upon people coming into agreement with you. They can come into total disagreement with you. They can be in total unbelief, but it does not change the faithfulness of God. You have to get this in your heart. I hope you're getting this. You serve a faithful God. He's not faithful because of your performance. He's not faithful because of your actions or of your behavior. He's faithful because he is faithful. He's not good to you because you've been good. He's good to you because he's good. Amen? That's our God. It's all about him. Amen? It's all about Jesus and what he provided. The problem is that many Christians give God uh, human characteristics. We base our idea of God off of personal experience. So if I had a father who walked out, then I'm waiting on God to walk out. I'm waiting on him to abandon me. If I had a, a father that was abusive to me, I'm waiting on God to abuse me. And that's the characteristics that we give our Heavenly Father. But the Bible is full of scriptures that tell us otherwise. The easiest way to discover who our Heavenly Father is, is to go and look at the life of Jesus. And I want to show you this. John chapter 14 and verse 9. Turn over to John chapter 14 and verse 9. I want you to see this. This is is so cool. We're just having Bible study. I'm going to end with maybe a little bit of preaching. I want to get you pumped up today. All right, you're a victor. You're not a victim. Amen. John 14 verse 9. Jesus said to him, And so it's red letters. Have I been with you so long, and yet you have not known me, Philip? He who has seen me has seen the Father. Jesus is speaking, and he's speaking to Philip, but he's also speaking to us. He says, he who has seen me has seen the Father. So how can you say, show us the Father? Jesus said, I only say what I hear my Father say, and I only do what I see my Father do. So any characteristic of God that people try to present and you cannot find it in the person of Jesus Christ, you have every right to question it. I want you to think about that. If they say Jesus, God is this way and he's a hateful, he's, he's full of judgment, he's full of wrath, he's full of condemnation, he, he'll give you sickness to teach you a lesson, to teach you humility or to teach you to pray, then you look at the life of Jesus and if you cannot find it in the life of Jesus, then you have every right to question what they're saying because Jesus made it very clear. He says, if you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Every time you, Jesus said, every time you look at me, you're looking at my heavenly Father. This is so important. I want you to get this. This is why I told you God didn't cause COVID-19, the coronavirus. He isn't trying to wreck the economy to get you on your knees to pray. He doesn't work like that. And to the people who are saying those things, you cannot show me anywhere in the life of Jesus where he gave leprosy to people to teach them to pray. He didn't do it. The man with the, the withered hand, he didn't, he didn't come to Jesus and Jesus looks at him and says, it's my will for you to be like that because it's going to keep you humble, brother. He didn't do that. You're just going to walk in humility because you're going to have to hide that hand. No, he didn't do that. He healed him. The Bible says, and I, I went through throughout the gospel everywhere, it says he healed all who were sick and oppressed, all diseases. He healed all. I circle that word all. I would encourage you to do that right in your Bible. All. He didn't leave anyone out. When they came to him, he healed them. You can't find anywhere in the life of Jesus where he said, you go over there and I'm going to teach you how to pray because you're going to suffer with this. It's going to teach you humility. No. But yet we have people and even Christians giving God those characteristics. But Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. So all you have to do is go to the Gospels and look at the life of Jesus. Somebody say, man, this is good preaching so far. That's the heart of our Heavenly Father. Can you see his faithfulness in this? He wants to heal everybody. 
All right, back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3. <clears throat> but the Lord is faithful who will establish you. And I want to focus on that. Who will establish you? I believe that God is using this difficult time to establish you. I believe that with all my heart. That's why I can't afford just to come in here and preach nice, neat little sermons. I've got to get in the Word of God because He's using this time to establish you. As I scroll through Facebook, I see pastors from all over the nation, all over the world, really, and they're sharing the Word. You're getting the Word of God more now through social media than we ever got just on Sunday morning. You can't hardly scroll down without seeing somebody encouraging you with the Word of God. We're receiving more. What is God doing during, during this time? He's establishing you. He's establishing you in His Word, and I believe that's what, exactly what He wants to do. He's using this time to establish you. I want you to come out of this stronger than when you went in. Amen, don't you? When we come out of this, I want the devil to be shaking in fear. Because what he meant for harm has actually pushed us deep into the presence of God. And God's ministering to us now on a level that we've never experienced before. I'm seeing people pray and people cry out to God. And people walking in faith and speaking the word of God like they haven't before in their lives. What the devil meant for evil, God says, I'm going to reach in and I'm going to pull the good out of it. Amen? So turn over to 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. 1 Peter chapter 5 and verse 10. But may the God of all grace, I like that right there, may the God of all grace, who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. I want to read that again. But may the God of all grace, the God of grace, who called us, you've been called, to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after you have suffered a while. After, after you have suffered a while. Are you suffering right now? We've been suffering for a while, right? Of course. But after you've suffered a while, God says, I'm going to perfect you. I'm going to establish you, I'm going to strengthen you, and I'm going to settle you. What the enemy meant for evil is actually a tool in God's hand to get you prepared for what's coming next. Amen. He's getting you ready for battle. I decree and declare that when you come out of this, the church of the living God is going to storm the gates of hell. God is going to get the glory out of what is about to happen in your life. Something awesome is about to happen in your life. Do you believe that? Do you receive it today? Your life is going to be turned upside down, and this time next year, you won't even recognize who you used to be. You'll say, what happened to that person? Because now I'm walking in faith. I'm walking in victory. I'm walking in the Word of God. I have the Word of God in my heart, not just in my mind, but in my heart. So when I speak, things happen. When I speak, just like Jesus says, my words become spirit, and they are life. Amen? That's what we're supposed to be walking in. And that word perfect is actually the word mature. God is using this time not only to establish you, but also to mature you. I want you to say this with me. Say, I'm growing up. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm growing up. I'm growing up. He's going to mature you. He's going to establish you, strengthen you, and settle you. So let's read it again. It says, but the Lord is faithful who will establish you. And the next part, guard you from the evil one. <clears throat> if God didn't send this virus, then who did? The enemy, right? The devil. God is so faithful that he will guard you from anything that the evil one is sending against you. And if you can believe this for a virus, per divine protection from a virus, then that same faith that keeps you from sickness is the same faith that you can believe against the economy, that God is going to provide. doesn't matter what's going on in the world around me. God's going to provide for me. He's going to provide for my family. He's going to provide for our church. Amen? It's the same faith. The same faith that got you saved is the same faith that receives your healing. The same faith that got you saved is the same faith that you, you receive divine prosperity and blessing. Whatever you need from the Lord, it's the very same faith. It's not a different style of faith. If you can believe that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, rose from the grave victoriously, and you accept him as your Savior, that's the same faith you use for everything else. Somebody say amen. That's all it is. It's the very same faith. So I release my faith today, and I say you're going to come out of this stronger than you've ever been. You're going to come out better than when you went into this storm. So how can I say that? I say that because our God doesn't live in reaction to what the enemy is doing. Our God saw this day coming when he hung the stars in space. I want you to get that in your heart. When he created the world, he saw this day coming. When he said, let there be light, he knew that there was going to be a financial crisis in the United States right now. When he breathed the breath of life into Adam, he knew that, that we would be having church in our homes today. He knew that. He knows the end from the beginning. Why am I saying all this? 
Because I want you to know that just like God knew that there was a date you were going to get in trouble, he also knows there's a date you're getting ready to come out of trouble. That's a good place to shout right there. If he knows there's a date that you get into trouble, he knows there's a date that we went into this crisis and we're in the middle of it right now. He says, I also know, church, that there's a date that you're getting ready to come out of this crisis. That's a good place to shout. Come on, say amen. He sees the beginning, he sees the middle, and he sees the end. We're in the middle of the storm right now, but our God has already provided a way of escape. He's provided a date for us to come out of this. It's a done deal. Say this with me. Say, I'm coming out of this. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm coming out of this. Your God is so faithful that he already provided a way of escape for you. I'll prove it to you. The Bible says that before the foundation of the world, the lamb was slain. That means that God made a way out of eternal death and eternity in hell. He made a way out before man even sinned. Is that amazing? Can you see his faithfulness in that? Before Adam and Eve even sinned, God set a plan in motion to send his son Jesus to the cross. And you and I are worried about coronavirus. <laughs> We're worried about the economy. Come on, he's got it all figured out. God has already set a date for you to come out of this. Just say it again. Say, I'm coming out of this. That means you've got to make up in your mind, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of depression. I'm coming out of discouragement. I'm coming out of complacency. I'm coming out of lack. I'm coming out of poverty. I'm coming out of sickness. God has made a way out, and I'm coming out of this. Come on, say it again. Say, I'm coming out of this. We need somebody over here on the piano playing a little bit. I feel like preaching. Say it again. Say, I'm coming out of this. Can't you see how big your God is? Can't you see his faithfulness? He's already made a way out for you. He's already made a way out for your family. Just like he saw the date that you're going into the trouble, he saw the date that you're coming out. He's already set that date in place. I'm coming out of this. Stop begging him to get you out and start praising him because he's already made a way out. Amen? There's power in your praise. Your worship is a weapon. When you thank him for getting you out before you're out, your faith now kicks into high gear because you're praising him for something that hasn't even happened yet. Now you'll notice that you're going around the house saying, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. You'll go up to the refrigerator and just say, I'm coming out of this. You'll go to the mailbox and get some bills that come in the mail. you say, I'm coming out of this. And now it's not just something you're saying, but it's, it's taking root deep down in your heart and you're speaking out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks and now you're not just saying something hoping that you'll believe it you believe it so there's power behind it and you're prophesying over your own life over the life of your family the life of your church and you're saying i'm coming out of this because now your words have become spirit and they've become life amen do you receive that today just say this with me say my family's coming out my church is coming out my community is coming out of this and the more that your faith grows the deeper that root goes into your heart. And out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Now we're speaking with power and authority because you believe what you're saying, because you believe in God's faithfulness. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He saw the date you're getting into trouble. He sees you in the middle of trouble, and he already he's waiting for that day that he says, this is the day you're coming out. Amen. I want to just share something with you real quick. It doesn't matter how big the storm is in your life. It doesn't matter the size of the storm. Let's say this storm is the, the size of the entire state of Illinois. If you just keep walking, eventually you're going to come out. Let's say you're over on the Missouri side and you begin to walk through the storm and you're walking all the way across the entire state of Illinois and you get to Indiana. Eventually you're going to come out of the storm. Well, God sent me here today to tell you to, to just keep walking. Come on, say it. Say, keep walking. Sometimes you have to encourage yourself. I have to keep walking. We're in the middle of the storm. Now's not the time to give up. Now's not the time to throw in the towel. Now is the time to keep walking. Stay in faith. Stay in his word. You're coming out of this. Say it one more time. Say, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I'm, I decree and declare over you today you're coming out strong. You're coming out of this mature. You're coming out of this established. You're coming out of this settled. You're coming out of this on fire. You're coming out of this armed with the word of God. Amen. Do you receive that today? I'm, I've already preached myself happy. Amen. This is awesome. If you were in here, we'd be having a shouting time. I just believe you're, you're receiving this and shouting at home. You cannot get into the word of God and talk about God's faithfulness and it not pump your spirit up. Amen. Second Corinthians, or I keep saying Corinthians, Second Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 3. We're going to close with this. <clears throat> Let's look at it one more time. But the Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful. The Lord is faithful who will establish you and guard you from the evil one. So I just want to encourage you today, stay in faith. Stay in faith. Stay in the word of God. Speak the word of God. 
I can't wait till we get back together. We're going to have church on a whole different level. It's going to be awesome. Why? Because you're being established right now. God is allowing his word to come into you. And it is, you may not even feel it right now, but there are roots going deep into you, down into your heart, down into your soul, into your spirit right now. So that when you come back, when you come out on the other side of this, you're going to be able to look back on this time and say, it was good for me that I was afflicted. It was good for me that I went through that. As tough a time as it was, it was good because I came out on the other side stronger. I came out on the other side maturing. I came out on the other side established, walking in faith, walking in victory, walking in triumph. And I trusted God. Why? He is faithful. He is faithful. He is faithful to complete. He's the one that started the work in you. He is faithful to complete that work that he started on the inside of you. Amen. He is faithful. I want you to just get that in your heart and in your spirit. God is faithful. So I want to close in prayer today before we take communion. And I just want to just speak to the Lord just from your heart. I know you've been praying already. You're praying, you're praying every day, getting into his presence maybe more than ever before. But I want you just to pray. We're going to get into his presence together. Father, we thank you for most importantly for your presence today. We thank you, Lord, for meeting with us, for hanging out with us. We thank you for your word. And Lord, we thank you for your faithfulness. You are so faithful, Lord. We just, we worship you today. We praise you. We praise you for all that you've done, but we worship you for who you are. We love you, Lord, with all of our hearts. Father, I pray that you would strengthen your people that are watching today, that you would encourage them, that you would bless them. Father, I pray that you would bless their families, bless their health, bless their finances, every area of their life, Lord. I just I plead the blood of Jesus over their lives, over the lives of their family, everyone connected to Freedom Life Ministries, everyone watching today. Lord, I pray that you would just bless them abundantly. Father, we're going to come out of this stronger than ever before. We're going to come out of this mature And I believe you're coming back soon. You're getting the church ready. You're using this. You didn't cause this, but you're using it for your good. You're getting us prepared. We love you with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. I love you guys. I really do miss you. It's it's weird being here all the time and just ministering to a camera. It's it's okay. I'm, I'm honored to do it, to be able to feed you spiritually in your house. But I wish you were here. When, when we get back together, we're going to have a good time in the presence of the Lord. I can't wait to worship with you. That's one thing I miss the most. We're able to get into the Word right now, but being together corporately to be able to worship the Lord together, I really miss that. And I can't wait till all of us are in here, the room's full, and our voices are lifted to the Lord. It's going to be an awesome time. So I encourage you, stay in faith, stay in the Word, and He is faithful. God is faithful. And I want you one more time just say, say, I'm coming out of this. I'm coming out of this. I want you just to keep saying that. Say, I'm coming out of this. Because you're, you're speaking in the direction you want to go. You're speaking in the direction you want to go. Say it one more time. Say, I'm coming out of this. So I love you guys. We're getting ready to take communion. All right, let's get ready to partake of communion of the Lord's Supper together. I want to read 1 Corinthians 11, verse 23. For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed took bread and when he had given thanks he broke it and said take, eat this is my body which is broken for you do this in remembrance of me in the same manner he also took the cup after supper saying this cup is the new covenant in my blood this do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me for as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes So that's what we're going to do. We're going to eat the bread and drink the juice. And I just want you to say what we always say. Say, this is for my healing. This is for my healing. Now, I explained it last week that because the church has failed to discern what the the juice and the bread is for, what communion is for, many are weak, sick, and many have died before their time. But when we discern what this is for, we're strong and we have long life. Amen? We're healthy. So I just want you to say, say, this is for my healing. This is for my healing. So, Father, we thank you that even though we're apart right now, that we're actually we're joined together in the Spirit. We may be in different places, different locations, but we're together in the Spirit, and we thank you for that, Lord. We thank you, Lord, for all that you've done. Thank you, Father, for sending your Son to the cross. And we understand that this is for our healing. Isaiah 53, verse 5 says, By your stripes we are healed. First Peter 2, 24, By your stripes we were healed. Past tense. 
We believe that. We receive it today, knowing that as we eat this bread and drink this juice, you're healing us from the inside out. Your word says that l- your life, life is in the blood. Life is in the blood. So we're, we're drinking and eating your life into us today. Thank you, Father, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for ministering to us today. We love you in all, with all of our hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. I just want to thank you for hanging out with us today. Freedom, I love you guys. It's, it's awesome to be able to minister to you like this. Thank the Lord for technology. But I just want you to know today, you're coming out of this. Don't get discouraged. Don't get depressed. Don't get down. You're coming out of this. God is going to use what the enemy meant for evil. He's going to use it to bless you. He's establishing you. He's strengthening you. He's settling you. He's maturing you. He's creating a firm foundation so whenever we're released and we can come back to church, look out. It's going to be an awesome time. So I love you. Stay in faith. Stay in the word. I love you with all of my heart.